Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Dervatis. Welcome back to my channel, Talking IUC with Dr. D. I'm Christina Dervatis, an OBGYN in Newmarket, Ontario. Today's video is going to address the question of who is or is not eligible to consider an IUD. That is to say, which patients for medical indications uh, or other comorbidities or um, coexisting medical conditions, which patients cannot or should not use an IUD. Now, I'll start off by saying that the list of those patients that should not use an IUD, the list is very short. That is to say, very few women are absolutely contraindicated uh, when it comes to intrauterine device use. Now, another issue that I'd like to address is that there are some patients who are actually very good candidates for IUD use, but for whatever reason, or because of whatever myths or misconceptions uh, out there, they think that they aren't able to consider an IUD. So I want to address some of those myths. So I'll start out there and starting out on the list of women who, or patients who can consider an IUD, First is nullagravidas. Now, nullagravidas means not having had previous pregnancies. These patients are absolutely able to consider an IUD. In the past, it was a bit of a myth that only patients who had had previous children would be uh, able to consider an IUD, and that's absolutely not the case. The second myth that I wanted to address, uh, which I've already just briefly mentioned, is the myth that adolescents aren't able to use an IUD. That's absolutely not true. Anyone who is sexually active is able to consider using an IUD. There's not sort of a minimum age uh, restriction. And to further drive this point home, uh, recently, the Canadian Pediatric Society actually published a document emphasizing that intrauterine contraception should be considered a first-line option to offer any sexually active adolescent. So regardless of your age, you can consider an IUD if you're sexually active. I also wanted to address the breastfeeding population. Absolutely, if you are breastfeeding, you can consider an IUD whether it be the copper IUD or the levonorgestrel IUD. The progesterone in the levonorgestrel IUD does not interfere with breastfeeding. Very little of that pro progesterone actually even enters into the systemic blood circulation. But regardless, progesterone-only contraception is a completely viable option for patients who are breastfeeding. Uh, and certainly the levonorgestrel IUD is not any uh, exception to that. Another unique patient population that I've uh, gained experience with is the patient population who has not yet become sexually active, but is planning to and wants to insert an IUD prior to the onset of sexual activity. Although this situation can be a little bit trickier uh, with regards to the actual insertion procedure, it is not actually impossible to insert an IUD if you've not yet been sexually active. When we talk about the contraindications, we will mention that an active, ongoing, current pelvic infection is a contraindication to inserting an IUD. But if you've had a previous pelvic infection, um, such as chlamydia or gonorrhea, for example, as long as it's been successfully treated, you are still a candidate for an IUD in the future. Another population that I wanted to address was uh, those patients who have had a previous blood clot, a previous history of a blood clot, uh, or a family history of blood clotting, or even a genetic diagnosis of a condition that might predispose to blood clotting, does not mean that you can't consider a levonorgestrel IUD. You also can consider a copper IUD, um, but some of the confusion lies around whether or not that patient can consider a progesterone-containing IUD. The reason we have a red flag up when it comes to contraception and blood clots uh, is the fact that in the birth control pill, the estrogen component can 
predisposed to an increased risk of blood clotting. So we definitely want to avoid estrogen in patients who have had a, a history of blood clotting. But the progesterone component has not been shown to definitively increase blood clotting risk. And so patients who have had a previous blood clot or who might be at higher risk for a blood clot are still able to use a levonorgestrel IUD in addition to uh, a copper IUD. Now, switching gears to looking at those patients who should not consider an IUD, I'm gonna go through the list. And, and so the list is as follows. Uh, the first absolute contraindication patient who should not have an IUD inserted is a patient who is already pregnant. Um, that seems fairly self-evident, um, but for the purposes of pregnancy prevention, uh, the IUD should not be inserted into a pregnant patient. The bottom line is, is that when we're ins inserting an IUD, we need to be certain that the patient is not already pregnant. Uh, and for that reason, my office policy is to do a serum or blood pregnancy test 24 to 48 hours prior to the appointment. The second contraindication I've already made reference to, that would be a situation where there's an active pelvic uh, or cervical infection. Uh, so we call it PID or pelvic inflammatory disease, or if there's evidence of cervicitis, so if a cervix is looking inflamed uh, or there's concerning discharge or signs of infection, those would be situations in which we would want to in avoid inserting an IUD if we were worried that there was an actual active infection happening. Um, another situation that we would want to avoid inserting an IUD is in someone who had had a miscarriage recently uh, that was felt to be uh, secondary to an infection situation. So we call that a septic miscarriage and we would not want to insert an IUD immediately after that infection situation. Um, in patients who have a known distorted uterine cavity, we would not want to insert an IUD. Um, some examples of uh, things that might distort a uterine cavity would be fibroids that are very large and pushing into the uh, cavity of the uterus. Uh, that's a benign growth of the muscle layer of the uterus that is fairly common and sometimes can poke into the uterus and might interfere with an IUD. There are some rare uterine anomalies uh, at birth that might uh, mean that a patient would not be a candidate uh, for an IUD insertion. But these sorts of things are relatively rare. Another category where we would avoid inserting an IUD is if someone was having an abnormal bleeding pattern that we hadn't yet sorted out or investigated yet. So if there was some sort of abnormal bleeding going on that was worrisome, uh, we would want to do proper investigations and sort all of that out before we went ahead and inserted an IUD. Similarly, if there was concern about a possible cancer of the cervix or of the uterus um, and that was a, awaiting treatment or further investigation, we would not want to be inserting an IUD uh, in that situation. There's a rare condition called uh, gestational trophoblastic disease, and without getting into a whole lecture about that condition, um, I will say that in patients who have that very rare uh, pregnancy complication, we would not want to uh, insert an IUD. Another absolute contraindication to specifically levonorgestrel IUD insertion would be someone who currently has a progesterone receptor positive breast cancer. Uh, so in those patients, um, a copper IUD would be an option, but we would want to avoid progesterone in those cases. So we would want to avoid a levonorgestrel containing IUD. And then the last uh, very rare contraindication to uh, an IUD being inserted would be a patient with the rare condition of pelvic tuberculosis. Those are the absolute contraindications. There are a few contraindications that fall into category three, which is to say that the theoretic or proven risks uh, usually would outweigh the advantages of considering that treatment. So it's not an absolute contraindication, but we want to think long and hard before we consider this sort of a treatment in these patients. So 
uh, one such patient would be a patient with a past history of progesterone receptor positive breast cancer. Uh, so again, this is referring to the levonorgestrel IUD. Uh, a copper IUD would be fine in this situation. Another such patient would be one with severe liver diseases, uh, such as cirrhosis, hepatocellular adenoma, or uh, cancer of the uh, cancer of the liver. So, in those situations, we would potentially want to avoid um, a levonorgestrel containing IUD. Another category of patients is those with complicated solid organ transplantation. So, patients who have had a, an organ transplant. Uh, and have had complications thereafter. Uh, and then the last category would be patients who are more between 48 hours to four weeks postpartum. We can still consider the IUD for postpartum contraception. It's fine in breastfeeding patients, but we don't want to uh, insert it too soon uh, after delivery. Generally, the recommendation is six to eight weeks after uh, delivery. It is okay to consider within the first 48 hours after a delivery. Um, that's sort of a separate conversation, immediate postpartum uh, IUD placement. But basically between the window of greater than 40 hour, 48 hours to four weeks postpartum, uh, we would avoid inserting an IUD. So that's just been some information about patients who can and can't consider an IUD. Uh, as you know now from having heard the list, it's very rare for a patient to have a condition to uh, a condition that would preclude an IUD insertion, and most patients are able to consider uh, an IUD. If you're looking for uh, more information, again, I'd refer you to the website of the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada, uh, which you can find at www.sexandyou.ca. Particularly, I would refer you to their app, which is called It's a Plan. And this decision-making tool helps patients decide which contraceptive options are actually options for them by typing in some details about your own personal history and medical history. This decision-making tool helps you know uh, which contraceptive options uh, are available to you uh, versus which options should you avoid if you have other medical conditions. So definitely check out that website for more information. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I will end by reminding you that in less than the time it took for you to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted. It takes just five minutes uh, to insert and provides five years of worry-free contraception. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.